Hey guys, my name's Aaron from Geeky Limit Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna be creating our very own changing image gallery. This gives the ability to show off our recent works, our favorite images, or just a way of um, kind of changing through a sequence of images themselves. It's gonna be really, really handy to create and add into any of your applications. We're gonna have two buttons, an image view and a label, and what they're gonna do is, every time we press the next button, it's gonna show the next image within the sequence. We're gonna update a label simultaneously at the same time to tell us what image we're currently on and how many we have left. And then we can have a back button, which will then reverse it and go back to the start, back reversing through the sequence itself. It's gonna be very, very simple to create, but very, very useful to add into any application. Now this tutorial has been taken directly from our iOS 10 and Xcode 8 complete Swift free and Objective-C course, where you can create fantastic, fun, addictive, and very useful applications and games with over 40 hours of video content within Swift free and Objective-C. And if you check out the link in the description, you can get this course with a huge discount only using the link down below. So make sure you go check that out and let's begin with this tutorial. So far, we've learned about how dynamic image views can be in terms of displaying images. And we've learned about how great it can be to display images within our applications. So now we're gonna move on to something a little bit challenging, a little bit different. We're gonna be creating a mini image changing gallery. And what this is gonna allow us to do is have two buttons and an image view. The two buttons are gonna say either next or back, depending on which button it is. And every time we press next, it's gonna change the image within the image view. We're gonna have about six images all together, and when it gets to the sixth image, we won't, to, won't be able to go any further because there's not a seventh image. And vice versa, going all the way down to one, you can't go back to zero because it isn't a zero image. So we can have the ability to control our little mini image gallery with um, ints and using kind of values that change uh, for our user. So on the desktop, I have a bunch of images that we're gonna be using. It's all different landscapes that look really, really cool and are very eye-catching. So we're gonna add these into our project. So you can get these too, just by getting a downloadable resource on this lecture, you can follow along. Go to our assets folder and drag and drop all of these new images in. So we got them all in now. Okay, image one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so they're all in. We're now gonna jump into our main dot storyboard and design our interface. So in the interface then, we're gonna need an image view and two buttons. So let's find the image view first, drag and drop that in. There we go. And we're gonna need two buttons. Now I'm not sure how I'm gonna kind of display this. Let's go quite big with the image view here to each of the sides. And let's place this button in the middle. Let's make it a bit wider. And copy and paste it quickly. And then center them both. So they drag over to each of the sides. And what we're also going to do as well is we're gonna add in a label. Now what the label's gonna do is basically be, or well, display as an indicator to let us know what image we're currently viewing and how many is left. For example, we've got six images. If we're viewing image three, it would say three of six. And again, if we're viewing image one, it would say one of six. If we're viewing the sixth one, it would say six of six. So it lets our users know what image they're currently on and how many they've got left to display within our little mini image gallery. So that will kind of display like zero, or let's say one of six, not zero. There we go. One of six, and then as we go up by pressing either our next button or our back button it's also not only going to update the label but it's also going to update what image is being currently displayed within our image view so before we go any further then let's create our action outlets that we're going to need to create this little mini image gallery so click on the files owner and bring up our assistant editor and I space out our outlet section and our action section so drag and drop over our image view and i'll simply call it image view, add that in. Same goes for our label. I'll simply call that label. And then we need two actions, one for our next button. 
So call it our next button, connect that up, and then one for our back button. So call that our back button. Now, an additional thing we're gonna do as well is when we get to our six image, we don't want to have the user to have the ability to press next to go to the seventh one, because there isn't a seventh one. So we're going to basically control our buttons in terms of we're gonna disable them so our users can't select them. So to do that, we also need the buttons to be basically outlets. So I'll call this our next outlet because we've already called those ones our next and back button. We call this one our back outlet. There we go. And we're also going to need an int, so which is going to be used. So we can use that to not only display within the label, but we can use the int to control the content for if our int equals six, then disable our next button so we can't go to number seven. So create a variable and I'll call it our image int. And let's have that equals zero for now, just so it knows it's an int so we can reference it further on in the project. So now we've got that set up, we're going to close our assistant editor, go back to our standard editor. Now I'm going to select the image view and I'm going to quickly put in our image one. Just so I can simply, well, basically have it already preloaded on our image one, but also we can change how it displays it. So I'm going to change it from scale to fit to aspect fill and then select clip to bounds just so it kind of fits it in more proportion. You kind of get a kind of full feel of the, uh, the actual image within the image view and it scales it so there's no kind of um, uh, distortion uh, with the image being stretched. Okay, so now we've got that set up, we're gonna jump into our view controller.swift. Now what we're gonna do first is set up the ability to, when we press next, it's gonna update our int and display it within the label. Then we're gonna get the ability to control the button, so when we get to six, it disables our next button. When we get to one, it disables our back button, so our users can't go any further. Once we've got that kind of control, then we can display the images within our image view. So then, within the view did load, I'm gonna have our image int simply equal the value of one. And then we're gonna get our label dot text to equal a string. And the string is gonna equal, there's replacing it now, it's gonna have our int then slash six. So whatever the image int is equaling, we do the backslash and our two brackets, and replacing our image int, and then after the bracket there, that's holding the value now, forward slash, of six. So as it's going to equal one, it should automatically display one of six within our label. So within our next button, every time we press the next button, what that's going to do is plus one onto our image in. So we get our image in and we plus equals one every time we press it. Then we get our label, which uh, be just a little bit quicker now if I quickly copied and pasted this in. It will get a label, then equal and display the current new value. If I copy this and then for our back button, instead of plus in, what this is going to do is take away. There we go. So, what again, quick rundown. We have when we first loads up, it equals our image int to one. It displays that within a string formatted way into our label, as I don't know where you can read it. So, it gets the current value of our image int, which at the moment is going to be one, placed within, then does slash over six. If we press our next button, it presses one onto the int, then displays it within the label. If we press our back button, it takes away one from the int and displays it also within our label. So we're gonna to go to build and run. Make sure that it is updating and it is displaying it correctly within our label. So by default, it displays one over six. That's what we set it within the view did load. We press our next button. It then pluses one to the int. You don't see this in the background, but we get a visual confirmation within our label. Go up to six and all the way back down to one. So we know that's working. One thing it will do though, if I press back now, it will go below and it will go above six. So we need to add in the controls that it won't go any further than six and it won't go below one. And once it reaches the maximum and minimum, it disables our next button and back button so a user simply can't press it. So back within our project now, we're gonna create a function statement. Now this function statement's gonna hold all the capabilities um, of simply kind of triggering the images to display within the image view, but also controlling if our buttons are enabled or disabled. We're just gonna use our next and back button to kind of trigger this function statement. So we type out func, and I simply call it 
image gallery and our two brackets on the end there and create our parentheses and enter and we do all this simply off if statements for example if our image int is equal equal to the value of one before we're placing these brackets now if our image int is equal in one we want to first disable our back button because we can't allow them to go back to display zero so we just get our back outlet dot is enabled to equal false once we've done that we're then going to get our image view dot image equals a ui image bracket named and in the string that's going to equal our first image which in my case is called image one dot jpeg there we go so i'll just put a space between them there so you can clearly see it so that only happens if the image int is equal to one now if i copied this as we have six all together it's just the only difference is if i place it in there it's one two three four five six so the difference is we need to change out all of these kind of react if the image int equals it so let's change all these values first so we've got one for each value so if it equals one disable our back button display image one if it equals image two re-enable our back button because at that point we'll be able to go back display image two we can get rid of the enabled section here because we no longer need it we can display image three this one can be four and again get rid of that now we'll jump five go straight to six so if it equals six we want to disable our next outlet our next button and display image six now if it's displaying five we're going to get our next outlet to be re-enabled and again change that to display image five so again quick run down them if the image int equals one disable the back button so we can't go back to zero and then display image one if it equals two display image two three display image three four display image four now if it equals five it's going to enable the next button now the only reason it's enabling the next button is because if it went to six it would have disabled it with this line here and again display image five if it equals five if it equals six display image six so it only disables the back button if it equals one re enables it when we go to two disables the next button if it goes to six and re enables it once we go down to five so it's got that kind of control now how do we trigger this function statement from these buttons well it's very simple within the buttons we just simply do self dot and then the name of our function which is image gallery so every time we press one of these buttons we place it in both buttons now it's going to trigger that function statement to update now once it triggers this function statement it's already updated our int we're either adding or taking one away so it just reads the correct if statement for it so let's go to build and run then and see exactly how our small little mini image gallery is now working so by default we got our first image within our image view it says one out of six but at the moment our back button is enabled so we don't want that to be enabled to start with so back within our view did load we're going to get our back outlet dot is enabled to equal false so now if we build and run we should have that control straight away at the start our back button is going to be disabled we won't be able to use it in our application so we just wait for it to load up now and you can see our back button is now disabled we can't press it at all but if we press our next button not only does it change the image then it says two out of six but our back button is now enabled i can press the back button and because it equals one again it's reading this function statement which then disables it so i can keep going through and when i reach six it should disable the next button which it does and that's how that we have that type of control as i go back it re-enables it over our image gallery we've got that control now so not only do we have the control for when we get to the maximum and minimum it disables the buttons we can also display the current image that we're on such as six out of six five out of six seven out of six i mean four out of six sorry but i don't know where i got seven from but you can see how we got that control now and then we change the image within the little image gallery 
So this is great if you want to display like a mini portfolio in your application. You want to give your users that control of displaying the images within the app and they can see what image they're on and how many they've got left to view within this little image gallery. And there we go. We just created our very own changing image gallery. So think of what you could possibly do with this within any of your applications. Maybe you're a business or you're an artist and you want to kind of showcase some of your images, your favorite images, your recent works. Having a change in image gallery allows your users to simply go through all of these images within a sequence and again, see everything that you have to offer. So if you'd like to learn iOS development in greater detail within Swift 3 or Objective-C, make sure you check the link down below in the description for a fully featured course which contains over 40 video hours of content. How cool is that? So I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.